Welcome to Facebook Live. Um, today's topic is going to be banking on swimming. So thank you for joining us. Um, as always, I'm Tori and I'm joined today by John. How y'all doing? Um, so as always, um, the most important things to remember, the most valuable things that we possess are ideas and the time to carry them out. And as you can imagine, and as usual, what we're trying to do here is give you the ideas so that you can really use the time that you have available to you. Um, the series that we do is designed to give you the information that you need to accelerate your ability to perform now and prepare you to get in the water. And today's topic is definitely geared toward that exact thing. So as usual, we have some supplementary topics that we would recommend that you go to our discovery center to um, take a look at after the presentation today. So again, fluidmechanics.net, and then you go to the discovery center. What we're recommending today is two different topics. Number one, the three pigs, and number two, global versus local energy systems. And those are great topics too. I think they're <laughs> Very um, and then as usual what we want to do is orient ourselves to where we are as far as the cornerstones of performance so today is actually going to be an energy systems topic we're really going to be talking about the in-water training that we can do to pre prep ourselves and all that fun stuff so john great Nice to see you all today. Um, we're going to start off with our uh, FM story time, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a story that's going to play into what it is that we're going to be working on today. So years ago, when I was uh, 14 or 15 years old, um, I remember I had a, a friend of mine that uh, was, um, he, he was a very, very, uh, let me see here, he, 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 he wanted to do something kind of in the summer for summer work. We lived in a fishing village, and so he got this job, and, and you see his job was the one that's on top here, whoops, that was on top here. He was parking cars, and it actually looked a little bit like it, but in, in behind there, you'd actually just see, you know, boats and water and things like that. So, um, so anyway, so the, let me just grab this really quick, um, and, and so. Anymore. Go ahead and share again. <laughs> what, did I did I stop sharing? Sorry about that. I tend to do that, guys. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it so, so it shares here really quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, where's my sharing? It's not sharing for some reason. There we go. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I tend to do that yeah, sometimes. So. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. That's better. There we go. So anyway, so um, and I'll try to get this into full screen mode for you. There you go. So anyway, so it, it kind of looked a little bit like this, uh, this um, where, where they have a parking garage. So he would go in and he, he came over to me and he says, you know, John, you should really get this job that I have. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm parking cars. And he says, it's easy. It, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time. It's nice and easy. Don't take a lot of time training. And he says, you make a lot of money. People give you big tips and you can get, you know, uh, uh, have a nice, easy heavy job you know we get a lot of money and I said you know I'm not sure if I want to do that I said you know kind of the easy road gets harder in life and the hard road gets easier now I pick swimming like you guys pick swimming and I congratulate you on doing that because that's not the easy road and I found that in the job that I took so the job that I took was down here and I became a helper. So I wasn't actually doing what the, the guy in the white shirt is doing here, which is actually building the wall. I was the guy that mixed the cement for this wheelbarrow. And I was a helper. So I wasn't working doing these. And I remember, so that, that was the job that I took, which was, I think, much more difficult. And, and, I, and, and, and it took a lot more effort to do than parking cars. And it took a lot more training to do. And I was learning as an apprentice to be able to, to do this. And uh, I could tell you, we used to lift like big buckets of cement and have to carry them up, you know, a couple levels. And 
we'd have to, uh, you can see here we're building a seawall. And if you take a look at how big those rocks are, we would have to physically by hand move those rocks into place. And so one day we went down and I'll never forget this, we went down and, and we were on the seashore like, like you see here. And we couldn't get the, the, the normal mixer. There was a small mixer that we used to use to mix up the cement. And they said, John, I'm sorry, but today we can't get it down in the backyard where we need it to be. So instead of having you mix it up here at the road and then bring it down because they don't want us to mix it the road, you're it. And I said, what do you mean you're it? And he says, you're mixing by hand all the cement today. You see all the cement that they're putting in there? I mixed all that by hand for all those guys. And so that wheelbarrow is something that I would bring down to them. So I would mix that. And I did about 34 wheelbarrows full. Now, if you've ever mixed cement, just one wheelbarrow full to mix that up is very, you know, it's very rigorous. I did 34 that day. I remember when, when I used to do this job, I'd eat a lot. I tend to, I love to eat anyway. And I would eat a lot. So I would make, my mom would help me the day before and we would make sandwiches. And I would make, and, and, and she together would make between eight and 12 sandwiches. And I'd have two of them for the 15 minute break, you know, two of them in the afternoon, 15 minute break. And I would have somewhere between, you know, uh, around eight to six to eight sandwiches for lunch. And then I'd fall asleep dead for about a half hour. They'd wake me up and go back to work. So this was an interesting learning experience working with those guys, they were so good at what they did. I worked with the best stonemason in the area and you learn so much. He was such a great uh, boss as well. He'd never do something, he'd never have you do something that he wouldn't do himself, right? If he had the time. So you felt great about what you were doing. And I got a huge amount out of that. I, I probably didn't make as much money that summer as the guy that was that the friend of mine that was parking cars. But I can tell you this, I, I developed an asset and that asset has played my whole life from what I learned there, um, along with other experiences, which was you know, to, the, the ability to work hard and continue to work at whatever it is you're focusing on and, and you gain a huge amount of respect when you're working like that for yourself, okay? So let's head on into banking on swimming, where you are again, we're going to gain a different perspective on your work, right? So again, a lot of times the hard, right? The, the hard road gets easier, whereas the easy road sometimes gets harder because if you take a job to learn and develop versus just taking a job to gain money, everybody needs money. What you get out of that experience in that job should be much more valuable than the money that you got. Money is only one layer of what you, you know, the benefits that you reap from what you do. That's why swimming is such a unique thing to do. Because the easy thing is to go home after school, sit down on a, you know, on a couch and watch TV and eat chips. But you guys have changed and, and took a different pathway. I don't think anybody that was just not into like progressing in life is going to choose swimming for a long period of time as it, right? This is going to be somebody unique, somebody that's willing to put in the work and see the returns. Okay, so we're going to gain a different perspective on our work today. Find out how to create assets. And some of these assets are hard work or, right, how you treat others. Um, you know, how you gain a return, things like this. And then I want to show how, right, and learn how to put your assets to work for you so you can get more back from your effort. We don't want to live a minimized life where you have very, very little. We want to, right, you don't want to live the minimum. You want to max out your life and do incredible things. Before you leave this earth, you want to do what you came for right? And you have to decide what that's for. So let's find out how to do that. So I was talking to someone a, a while ago, another friend of mine, and she said to me, she said, John, I'm investing. She's so excited. 
I said, oh, you're investing. How are you? Do what, what are you doing? Oh, well, my company is allowing me to put money in to a retirement account for the first time. I said, oh, that's great. Um, I said, so what are you putting it into? I don't know. She says they gave us a list of, you know, things to pick. I said, okay. So, so do you know what you were picking? Oh, they were just names. I, I asked somebody else who they who they invest in. You know, one of the other company, and they told me what to do. And I said, well, what do they know about investing? Well, I don't know. I said, so you're putting your money in, and what do you expect to do? She said, well, really simple. You put your money in, and when you retire, you got all this money. Great. So what are you putting your money into? What are, oh, some funds. They said it was funds. Okay, great. So I said, now how do you monitor whether it's growing or not? Oh, no. She says, you just at the end, when you, right, you look at it when you're done, when you're ready to retire, and you have all this money. I said, well, I want to congratulate you on, on starting to invest, but guess what? What happens down the road if something goes wrong? Will you know? I said, when are you going to look at it and monitor it and find out? Oh, no problem. She said, I look at it when I'm ready re to retire. So she thinks that what she puts in is investing. But investing is a process, right? It's not only what you put in. Remember back here, what I put in versus what he put in. But it's also what you get out. And the real thing is what's called the return. What's the difference between what you put in and what you got out? That's what your return is. Look over here. What did he put in? Not much. What did he get out? A little money. What did I put in? A lot of hard work, got a little money, but I got out a huge thing to carry for the rest of my life. In swimming, it's not the easiest thing, right? You put in a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of understanding you're trying to develop. What do you get out of it? And what's the difference between going home and sitting on a couch and coming back, right? And going in, and, and coming back with almost nothing. What do you learn from those, you know, games that you play on a computer or the, right, the, the TV shows? That hopefully, if you're learning from and, and you, you're watching a show that you get a lot out of, because otherwise you're wasting that valuable time. And again, remember, it's your ideas and your time to carry them out. And if you're not gaining those ideas, which I was doing here, you're not getting much out and it doesn't, you don't gain the asset, right? So we need to gain assets. So now let's find out in swimming, right? How you can gain more assets. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the process, basic process of three different systems. And these are financial systems. And then we're gonna apply it to how we can get this out in our swimming. So. We're going to go over three different systems, which I learned in a, a program that, that was absolutely phenomenal it was, uh, by uh, Robert Kiyosaki. And it, it was really neat. Uh, it, it teaches you about finance. And I'm not going to teach you all what, what he teaches you, of course. That's his course. But I just want to give you just a few interesting things that we can apply to what we do in swimming. Number one is understanding that you have three systems, poor, middle class, and rich. And here you have income and expense. Income is what you bring into your pocket. Expense is what goes out of your pocket. You have liabilities, which is where you own something that takes money consistently out of your pocket. So something you own that takes money out of your pocket and pushes it through expense. And then assets are something that you own that puts things back in your pocket, right? Back into income. So you can own like, for instance, a, a house that you rent to others, and then it puts money back in your pocket. Okay, let's go to the first system. And it says the poor right here, this is the poor system, they get income in. And the first thing they think of when they have that income is, oh my gosh, what, what, what can I buy with it? So income comes in and expense goes out. 
and they normally live kind of a flat life of income in and expense out, right? When we look at the next one, right, and they're, they're kind of at one major financial, right, financial calamity that'll destroy their, their financial capabilities. They don't use these. Let's look at the middle class. The middle class, a lot of times, right? They think that they're, they're and, and they do this because a lot of times the bank will tell them, your bank, your, your home is your biggest asset. I don't think so. I think your home is a liability. And they taught you that in this course. It was fantastic. So you get income out in. And so they, they buy, they go from income into a liability. They take on debt, right? So they, they take, they take, they, they buy it with a credit card or something like this, but they don't pay the credit card off. So they're paying, right? They're, they're constantly paying extra money to buy, let's say they want to go on a vacation for you know $5,000 and they take it out on a credit card and they pay monthly and they keep paying the, the extra debt. Every month they pay their bill, right? And keep, right? Or they buy their car and, right? And they take this loan and it pushes it out like that. That's when you buy a house with a mortgage, right? It's a liability. Now, so that's go income in and liability. So, so this one here, it's I to E, income to expense. In middle class, it's I to L. And then that passes through E because, right? I to L. So everybody's buying something. Watch, watch what the rich do. Income in, then they buy assets who pay them back. And it just spins this way, right? So if you look at this, we have I to E. We have I to L. And we have I to A. I to A is a rich system where you're going to have, right, the things that you buy, like houses that you rent, things like that, are going to pay you back. That's an asset. It's called an earning asset, one that actually makes you money. Not like a set of golf clubs or something like that, right? Or, right? Now, let's pull this back a little bit. So if you give everybody more money, let's say you give them a million dollars, right? The, if you give the rich person a million dollars, they're gonna spend it on an asset that's gonna pay them back more. So the rich get richer. The poor, Right? If you give them a million dollars, they'll spend it. That's their system. And they're going to stay poor. And the middle class is going to flounder in debt because, you know, income, the liability, and they're going to take on debt, right? They're going to buy, uh, right, a bigger house, something like this. They're going to take on more debt and it's going to keep what? Pulling out of their pocket. This is such a great lesson from the Rich Dad, Poor Dad series. I thought it was phenomenal. Now, let's use it. And he's got so many more lessons, but this is just a great one, I thought. And it makes it really simple. So the rich get richer, the poor stay poor, and the middle class flounder in debt. Let's take a look at investing in your technique to try to get a return. All right. So first, you have what's called a deposit. Right. And we're going to deposit. You're going to go in. Let's say you all of a sudden, let's use a... a, a uh, a pattern where you're trying to get what's called a high elbow commonly, right? And so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. So a high elbow, which a lot of people term it, we call it the paddle, but it's the same, same idea. This is the high elbow. So you're, you're pulling like this. And instead of just pulling back like this and slipping, right, and, and not getting anything out of it, you go like this, you build your pressure field, and then you're going to push off of that pressure field. That's a really important aspect of swimming right there. So that's going to be what we're focusing on. It's called A for arms, two. That's the second phase. A2 is to gain that, right? You want to gain that relationship with your pressure field so you can push off it. You want to get on the front of it before you pull. That's in every stroke, okay? So let's go back and say, here we go, and I'm going to share the screen. And you're going to deposit that in slow mode in practice. So let's say you're swimming along in, in, in practice. And you do that slowly for the slow set. You're depositing. But when are you going to withdraw? Right? You're not going to withdraw because you're never going to race in slow mode. 
right? So you're never going to pick that back up, but it's a progressive step. So then you need to do that same technique once you're good at doing it slow in a moderate pace. This is how you build this asset, right? If you just try to go in and, and use it immediately in super fast mode where you're emotionalized, that's not going to work. It'll never work generally, right? So you're depositing in practice, not only in slow, but now in moderate mode, that's a progressive step. You don't withdraw because you never race in moderate mode because that wouldn't be racing. You're then going to deposit in fast mode, right? In practice, so slow, moderate, and fast. So you're starting to build up that A2 capability and you're moving progressively faster and faster. You're taking progressive steps. But when you're going to withdraw, is in super fast mode. Now, a lot of people, they'll go and they'll deposit until they get to super fast mode. Now, super fast mode means, it, means it's emotional. So, right, you're emotionalized, you're attacking practice, but, right, you're really excited about what you're doing and you're like going after it in practice. Now, if you don't deposit that technique in super fast mode, how can you withdraw it? It's like going to a bank and saying, you know, hey, I deposit. I, I didn't deposit any money in this account. Can I withdraw from that account? I don't think they're going to let you withdraw from an account you didn't fill up. So you're going to need to deposit in practice in super fast mode, the things that you want, right? So we're going to want, and I'm going to show you exactly what we want in practice and what we're trying to take away from it, right? So we're going to deposit and then we can withdraw. Don't deposit, can't withdraw during a race. The only, right, the only place you're going to withdraw in a race is an emotionalized, super fast mode. That's it. No matter what event, you're going to be emotionalized. If you're doing the, the, the 1500, you're going to be emotionally invested if you're going to do well in it. Okay. So let's go down here and look at the three. When you're training with your team, with your coach, and this is one little tiny piece of understanding that, that's in our, our FM energy system program. We give you all kinds of assets on training. They're huge, they're really important assets on training. So let's start talking about the first one. We're gonna have three energy systems. And this is really important. Remember, we wanna gain assets, we wanna understand. That's what I was doing, right? I got a lot of understanding, right? In, in that job that I did. Right. The other guy, I don't think he got much understanding of, of you know, maybe not how to, how to not scratch a car or something like that. But in my job, I got a lot of understanding of, of many different aspects of work when I was doing that mason, stone masonry. So here we are. Let's gain this understanding. When you go into practice, you need to understand this. If you don't understand this, you're just going back and forth in the pool. And you need to do more than go back and forth in the pool because people are going to compete against you. And I know that they're going to know this because we're teaching them right now. So let's take a look at this. So when the, the first piece, and I'm going to relate so you understand this to financial resources. So your explosive system is for quick bursts, like, like leaping, right? Uh, like, like leaping off the wall, leaping off the block, right? Things like this, or the big kick at the end of the, of the race, right? So we are really like attacking at the end of the race. Now you need to train these if you're going to use these. Don't train them. You can't use them because you never deposited. How can you withdraw? Okay, so this explosive system is like having savings in your account. And so in other words, if you need money, you go to the bank. If you've got savings, you withdraw it and use it. The system's quick, right? But it doesn't last very long. Right, the savings, right? You can go through savings quick. So the next step, right? That's the explosive system. So, so your explosive system won't last very long. You can't use it the whole race. You can't use it all practice, but you need to train it to get better and, and expand its capabilities. Not only in quantity, like how long it lasts, but in quality, how much it gives back. That would be an asset that you'd be building during workout. And you can ask your coach, Coach, how do I build my explosive system for quick bursts? How do I do that more? What do I do? Right? Or you can take our program and teach you everything about it. Next thing is the lactic acid system, right? 
that's like taking a loan from the bank. You need the money relatively quickly, but it leaves a residual that you have to pay back, right? You got to repay that loan. The residual it leaves is called lactic acid. It gives you speed. So it's not quick burst, but it's speed. It lasts a little longer, actually quite a bit longer than the explosive system, but it leaves lactic acid and that causes fatigue. So you want to expand how long that will last and you want to expand how much that will give back. So you have more speed and you also get that speed for a longer period of time. If you don't train, you don't get that. So don't train it. You can't use it because you didn't build the asset. So these are three very important assets that you should know very clearly when you go to practice. The third one is your endurance. So you need quick burst, you need speed, and you need endurance, right? And that's called the oxygen system. This is like making money and working it off as you go. So in other words, it's like you're doing business and making enough money to pay for everything you need. And it's going to keep going and going and going as long as, right? as, long as there's not a, a major setback, like uh, things like uh, you know, that we're experiencing today where, where that you know, kills a lot of businesses because they're not open for business, right? Um, so they can't make money sometimes. So this burns clean, right? It leaves no residual and lasts for a long time. So if I set you off, for instance, in an, an endurance run, I said, I want you to go run a marathon. And you got ready to leave and you left, right? And you came back after running this marathon. How much lactic acid if I measured you in the beginning and then remeasured that in your, in your blood system at the end, how much more lactic acid would you have in your body? And if your answer is no more, you'd be pretty close to right. You'd have no more lactic acid or very little because that's not the system you were using for the marathon. You might've used it at the end a little bit, but there's not a lot of explosive motion and there's not a lot of speed comparatively to like a hundred yard race, if this makes sense. So let's go again. So the first one, explosive system, is like having savings in the bank. Boom, you can pull it out really quick. The lactic acid system, right, that's for speed. That's like taking a loan from the bank, which you gotta pay back, right? And that's gonna build up in your system. And then the last one is where you build your endurance. That's your auction system, right? And that's like you're working it off as you go. And it's much longer lasting because your business is now viable. You're not using up funds that you already have. So in that case, that's why everyone, right? No matter if you're a 50 swimmer, no matter what it is, you need to have this endurance. And so when your coach gives you a set that includes like 500s and things like that, this, that's when you're building endurance. And you, right, you want to be able to, and there's other ways to build endurance as well. So that's why it's probably a good idea to take our course on energy systems. If you haven't already taken it, you can get the, the welcome pack in there. Um, when, when, uh, when you're doing our um, FM fast track, there's, there's welcome packs for all these things in there included in the packet, really worthwhile. But you want to understand when you go in there, you don't want to go back and forth in the pool. You don't want to park cars. You want to learn and develop, right? Understanding is a very important aspect of what you're doing in your swimming. Getting on your bathing suit and getting them in the pool is a tiny piece of you becoming a high performance swimmer. This learning and understanding your sport so you can use that to compete is a very important aspect of what you do. It's like going to your job every day and just doing the job versus digging in and getting great at it and becoming one of the best at what you do. And so you want to gain these assets as you go. And remember, assets pay you back and they keep paying and paying and paying, right? Take a look. You want to build a rich system of assets that keep paying you back. If you're going back and forth in the pool, you're not building the assets, unless you understand what you're trying to get out of it and you can apply it for the rest of your swimming career and you can help others with it, right? You don't wanna gain bad information 
which are liabilities or misunderstanding, right? Because that will continue to, right? That's why it's important, the source of information. That's why I went to see Doc Councilman and swim for him is because he had this wealth of knowledge of how to build swimming assets, right? And you certainly don't wanna just go back and forth in the pool with a lack of information and hope someday you're gonna become great at this. Because the people listen to this program, they're already building assets right now that will outweigh in a huge way against the, their competition. So this is really important to understand why you train the way you do, where you want to invest. And you want to invest in all these areas, but you're going to withdraw and you don't want to come down to the last minute, right? Oops, let me see here. You don't want to come down to the last minute and say, you know, I don't know why I didn't make it, right? I was investing by just getting into the pool every day. I was investing. You know, if you want what everybody else has, do what everybody else does. But if you want something more, you have to feel differently, think differently, act differently, and you'll receive something different. So let's go down through here, right? And I'm gonna show you a great tool that you can use, whether you're a coach or a swimmer, to understand where you need to focus more on these three systems, okay? This is called our FM training plans. We have them for strength and in water. These are included for our fast track members, right? In their, in their annual uh, subscription. So it's all part of your program. I wanna show you how easy it is to set up your in water training plan. Ready? Here it is. So this is our in water training planner. I'll just close this up so you can see. Here's, our, here's your tools, right? And then once you go on your online tools, you just go down here, you find your training planners, you open them up. Okay, now this is how hard it is. I don't know if you can do it or not. Let's see, ready? Let's take the 100 freestyle short course yard. And we're gonna put in our start training date is 9-15-2020. And we're gonna put in our target race date, 3-15-2021, just for instance. And I'm just gonna hit create the plan. I'm done, that's it. It tells me what days exactly to focus on my distance training, which is endurance, interval training, right, endurance. So when I go into those practices, I know exactly what sets I'm looking for. Then it tells me repetition where I'm building speed and I'm focusing on explosive, right? My explosive system. And, and right, that's the quick burst. And then sprint. And then it gives me my taper dates, So I know exactly what to do, right? I can also customize it if I want, recreate the plan and I can determine what days I wanna put in. But it's just, that easy to do, right? It's to go in here and I go in and I create my plan. That's that easy. And then I can email it to myself. Oops, if I take this off here, create the plan, there it is. Now, in addition, if I wanna cre create my strength plan, boy, that's tough right here. Look at this, strength, done. Oops, there we go. Let me just click that again, sorry. There we go. There's the strength plan right there. and that that dovetails your taper right there. Right? And you can even purchase strength, uh, custom strength workouts, as well as uh, energy system workouts right here. If you're a, if you're a coach, uh, we design those worldwide for everyone, it's really easy. So anyway, so this is how easy it is. And this takes, if, you, if you're doing this on your own, it, it takes you at least, if you're an expert at it, it takes you about half an hour to an hour to get these all right, make sure that this is, is so fast, it's crazy. Okay, got it. So that's what we have today. This, these are fantastic assets. One of the things that you do again in when you're gaining assets is gaining tools that you use that you can count on that you know are gonna work correctly, right? And this is the type of thing that, that, you, that you really want that type of tool. Okay, so today we learned basically how to get more back from your effort. You want to gain a return. It's not just what you put in. It's not just what you get out. It's the difference between what you put in and what you get out is the asset, right? That you now can take away from there, right? And that, that's your return, okay? And so 
now you have a little bit of a different perspective maybe on your work and what you want to choose to do. And when you choose a job or something, to choose it to gain development, right? You know how to create assets, right? And, and, and it's getting those differences between what you put in and what you get out and how to put the assets to work for you. You want to have a plan like, I need to get this asset, right? Or I need to talk to someone to tell me what assets I need because if you're not collecting assets and you're going back and forth in the pool, you're not making a good investment, which me, and the reason why is you wouldn't be a good investor. Become a great investor, gain tremendous assets and do things with them all your life. Thank you. So as John was mentioning, the tool that he demonstrated today is part of the FM Fast Track, which is a pretty extensive list of online tools that we've put together for everybody. It is available on our website. If you go to the URL, fluidmechanics.net slash join FM Fast Track, you can always email us at swim at fluidmechanics.net to get a link to that page, ask us any questions. The fast track itself is 129 per year for members. So that's a little over ten dollars a month. Yeah, like ten bucks a year, right? Uh, ten bucks a month. Wow. Okay. You have access to all of those tools as well as the trial sessions for our three educational topics, uh, the brain, strength, and energy systems programs. So a lot of value packed into a pretty comprehensive package. Um, so definitely go sign up and get access to that today. And Tori, the, the college pipeline's in that too, is that right? College pipeline's in that too. So college pipeline itself is literally a way for swimmers anywhere from eighth grade all the way through high school to jump in and see exactly what they need to do to be able to get to their college of choice. Figure out what that college of choice is figure out what are the requirements, both as a student and as a swimmer, and exactly what they need to do through every step of the process from anywhere to, you know, beginning their swimming program to getting into recruitment and then actually going to college. And, and, and the reason why we, we, we included that, right? We have so many kids that go on from fluid mechanics to go on and swim in college. Uh, we're by far the, the, the top in the world of you know driving swimmers from you know they're wanting to go on to swimming college we use these tools to get them there and so what what um lisa pizzuto our our regional manager here um had decided she said you know we need a way because we've got so many kids are trying to get to college to guide them step by step through the process because otherwise they're checking all over the place trying to figure out what are the ncaa rules for division one division two right what, what do i do and there's so much stress and what this does is it removes the stress from our swimmers that want to go on and swim to college to say, here's the easy way to do it. And they start at eighth grade. It tells you exactly what to do, how to get there. And, and if you get that many swimmers going there, you really need to get that done. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're planning on swimming in college, FM is definitely the place to be because we help swimmers get there. That's what we do all the time. So, okay, great. Thank you, Tor. And then um, let me go ahead and, and be, actually, I think, next week's program right? so pretty much yeah so next week we're actually going to be talking a little bit more about that pathway to swimming in college we're going to be doing the presentation it's going to be me and lisa next week and she's going to be taking us through essentially uh the college pipeline so um, it's actually the one that wrote it right? <laughs> yeah. that's great great Okay. So, as always, thank you guys so much for joining us. Let us know what you thought. Let us know if you have any questions. And definitely get to the website. Take a look at those Discovery Center topics that we recommended in the beginning. Um, and get access to the Fast Track. All right. It's great seeing you guys. Thanks very much for joining us.